boys and girls, welcome to the Thirteen Nights of Halloween. A That Gets My Goat Marathon with Rish Outfield and Big Anklevich. Hi everybody, welcome back. This is Big Anklevich. And this is Rish Outfield. It's time for another exciting day of the Thirteen Nights of Halloween. Exciting, really? Happy. Joyful. Not what we're going for? I wouldn't think so, but I mean, there are happy, joyful aspects to Halloween. Like yesterday we were talking about trick-or-treating, right? We were were talking about crappy candy yesterday. (laughs) Yeah, that's more like it, the non-joyful part of it. We had so many questions by the time that we were done talking about where trick-or-treating came from and how that worked out that I think both of us ended up doing some research. And, uh, well, if you can call looking at the Wikipedia page research, <laughs> I don't know if that really... I mean, that may be research in today's world, but uh, yeah, that's what we did. But it's better than just saying, well, I think squids are arthropods. Let's move on. <laughs> I, I think the so. capital of Iowa is Des Moines, Dubuque. Little Rock is the capital of Iowa. I could look it up, but I'm nah. just going to say. Yeah. Especially when you got the internet right in front of you. There's really not a good reason to do that. I think there was somebody that talked about that when they were reviewing podcasts. They're like, I hate it more than anything. When people say, hmm, I wonder what this is. And then they just go on. (laughs) It's not like you can't find the answer in a second. That's what we've become. You know, it used to be so much harder to find things out. Yeah, definitely. And maybe it made seeking out knowledge more rewarding when you had to work for it search engines have made lazy bastards of us all yeah i mean all information is available at our fingertips and maybe that makes it too daunting i don't know you're just like oh geez I mean, you know the problem with wikipedia yeah it's right? edited by people that no don't no really the problem know. with wikipedia is that you go to you look up one thing that you intended to look up but there's a hundred other things that it's suggesting that you click on. Yeah, and you click on one of those for and you. you click upon that and that. And the next thing you know, it's like 425 a.m. Because, yeah, I looked up trick-or-treating and then looked up Halloween celebration. And then I looked up uh, Halloween traditions. And then I looked up Devil's Night. And then I looked up the history of the rise and fall of Detroit. And then I looked up... <laughs> Famous <laughs> movies and landmarks in Detroit. I, I, this is not a lie. And I read an entire article about the film archive in Detroit, which was the very first building ever created to house film, you know, the on, the, on all the reels and that. I read this for, you know, 20 minutes or something. I had no interest in it at all, but suddenly it was fascinating. And it talked about in the heyday of the film world, how many... Uh, movie theaters there were just right there in Michigan and how people got their movies and that and it's like why don't we build a building and each build each floor of the building was another studio's archive so there was a universal floor and there was an RKO floor and all that and I was just like wow this is so cool and that building is still there and they had a picture of what the building looked like during the heyday of film and then they had the picture of what it looks like now after we crapped on all things that are were once beautiful and yeah like there were these cool statues on the building of of like two figures one with a projector and one with canisters of film and like the head has been removed knocked off like by hammers and stuff anyway i'm sorry that was a, an audio equivalent of the problem with wikipedia but there are so many possible roads to go that to me that was just fascinating but what we were saying about trick or treating that was neat. Wait, remember, because originally it was guising, right? <laughs> guising. Well, they, but they talked about it that in Europe. It was Theodore Geisel, actually, yes. was the, the original. May he rot in hell. Uh, but, they, you know, in medieval right Europe. Right here whatever. with me, Casey Kasem. <laughs> it's right. Keep your reaching for the stars and keep, keep your, your feet, feet in the hell. The, uh, but <laughs> they talked about the kids. The, 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 there was a day, and it, it might have been it was all the day before All Saints Day. Yeah, people would dress as the dead. Children would dress as people who had died, and they would go from door to door, and they would ask for a soul cake, which was a cake that 
had been made that was given to somebody to placate the dead, you know, for 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 a soul who had uh, had departed, this kid came as a proxy for the dead. And I I I, I don't know. I mean, it was so effed up that only Sting would write a song about it. <laughs> Although he didn't, did he? That was an actual song from like you know the seventeen. Yeah, yeah. I think he just performed 16. it. I, I think it was that people would go door to door and they'd say, "We'll pray for your souls if you give us a soul cake," and it was like paying people to pray for them so that the demons wouldn't get them and they'd make it to All Saints Day live and well. I don't know. It was something like that. Uh, It's been a couple of days now since we recorded that (laughs) last episode, so now I've forgotten all that amazing research I did about the Detroit Film Archives. But all of the... Okay, yeah. (laughs) All of this stuff died out. The the guising and the soul... Going, caroling, the wassailing. Uh, going a souling, I think is what they called it. <laughs> I'm sure. The, the, yeah. Which I stuff. guess the same thing as wassailing. You hear that song at Christmas time, and that's the same kind of a thing where they would go a wassailing. And there is even the song, Here we come a wassailing. Uh, yes, that's the the one line I couldn't remember. Um, but okay, anyhow, all this kind stuff of deal. fell out of favor, and that they were traditions that ended. Uh, but in America, about a hundred years ago, in like 1916, 18, suddenly there was a resurgence of interest in old Halloween customs of Europe. And a book was put out that talked about the children going door to door. And for some reason, people started to try it. It's like, oh, well, let's do that. We'll go door to door. And at first it was seemed pretty ominous that they would go and they would threaten people with mischief if they weren't rewarded in some way. And the children just ate it up. It became a huge deal for kids. To, it's like, oh, we're all going to do this. Let's get together, you know, on, on Halloween. And they would go from door to door. And uh, the radio picked it up. People would start to talk about it on radio shows. And, and, and uh, when this happened, suddenly it spread like wildfire. As soon as national radio picked Ozzie up. Ozzy and Harriet show, I remember being one of those shows. Yeah, they, they talked about it. And the older people really fought against it. You know, it's like they, they said that it was extortion, that, it, you know, there's like, why should I pay somebody who's threatening or pay me? Or why should I reward a bully and all that stuff? But, you know, for little kids, it, it just was kind of like it is now. It's just like we could get candy and it's an activity and we're rewarded for, for having candy. And, and in some areas, they had to perform. They had to tell a joke or they had to sing a song or whatever, but they would be rewarded in that way. And so, yeah, they once, had to write a 500 word essay. Or, yes. <laughs> they had to be able to name recite the their genealogy and name you know, the presidents the in, in order of. Uh... <laughs> and yeah, as the years have gone by, the whole trick aspect has all but gone away, except for in Detroit. Um. But. <laughs> and I'm sorry, it sounds like I'm bagging on Detroit, but I was horrified. By reading about Devil's Night and, and 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 what has happened to Detroit and the population now, as opposed to like in the 1970s, and uh, they called it ur- urban blight. Uh, is it urban blight? Where, but just where the grass and the, the plants or whatever just infest places that used to be buildings, and yeah, but yeah, people have moved out just en masse from Detroit. And they said that, like in 1984, there were over 800 fires set on Devil's Night on on October 30th. And just the idea, I mean, I I lived in a town where there were barely 800 people. (laughs) Uh, But now that they do, they do this Angel's Night kind of thing where people volunteer by the thousands to wander through the streets and uh, neighborhoods, keeping their eyes out for people wanting to set fires, wanting to make trouble. And all that. And so to me, it's like, oh, well, there's a silver lining to this. But uh, anyhow, that was, I guess, just all uh, referring to yesterday's episode. Um, but the practice of egging or putting poo on a doorstep <laughs> or uh, soaping windows. I, I asked my dad about it over the weekend. I said, you know, did you trick or treat when he was? And he was like, yeah, we didn't. We worked. We went to school. We stu-. And I was just like, Dad, I, why, why do I even ask you questions? So, yeah, I asked my mom, when you first came to this country, what was Halloween? Was there trick-or-treating? And she said, oh, well, we were backward. We didn't know. 
what was going on with any of that stuff. But, but we loved Dia de los Muertos. <laughs> and I, 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 yeah, they did. I asked her about Dia de los Muertos and she said uh, it was, well, it was just fun, you know, and there were parades and stuff, you know. Now, Dia fireworks. de los Muertos is what, the second? It's like the day after All Saints Day or when no, is It that? is All Saints Day. It it's, is it's All November Saints Day. It's November 1st. Okay. And, uh, yeah, it's just the holy day, whereas the day before was the unholy day. Uh-huh. Which is a simplification, I guess, but it's but that's what it is. I mean, the idea of the evil spirits being given one day where they can make mischief and wander around and, 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 and do that stuff, that is fascinating to me. As you know, I, I <laughs> totally get off on the idea of there being a day when the rules don't apply, you know, that kind of thing. There, there's this show that was on FX called American Horror Story, and it's about this house in Hollywood – where all these horrible events happened uh, and whoever dies in this house is stuck in this house as a ghost and they can't leave except for on Halloween. And there was an episode that took place on Halloween and, oh, it was just fantastic. These guys were just like, yeah, it was spring break or whatever. And suddenly they could go out and, and party and that's what they did. They went out and they drank and they wandered around and did parades and one of them went to the beach because they loved the beach and all that stuff. But, you know, when the sun came up, the next morning, they were stuck in their prison again in the house. And they could interact with people. And people just assumed they were in a costume and all that stuff. And to me, it was just like, oh, that is so cool. That That is their Christmas. They, they look forward to it all year. And it's like, oh, I can't wait. You know, because a lot of them had dysfunctional relationships. Like they'd killed their lovers or their you know husbands or whatever it was. And now they were stuck with the person that they hated in this house forever kind of thing. And just finally have one day where I can go do whatever I want. You know, I can go to the movies or something like that. It was joyous to me. The idea that the ghosts had things they looked forward to <laughs> was just a really, really wonderful idea. And uh, anyhow, as you know, I mean, I get excited about it. Just the idea that the veil, if you will, from our world and the, 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 the afterlife and the spirit world or purgatory or wherever these ghosts come from is lifted for a day. And that they can roam about and that the children put on costumes, you know, to either fool the spirits into thinking that they're a spirit as well and they'll be left alone or frighten away the spirits. That to me is just awesome. And yeah, that's been completely forgotten, but partly because it's upsetting. It's disturbing. It's mm-hmm. scary. You don't want to tell your kid that. Oh, well, that's the day that the ghosts can roam around like regular people. Billy? But so you I, better get a good costume to fool it into thinking you're actually a pumpkin. <laughs> but Dia de los Muertos is a little bit like that. You know, I mean, it's like with the parades and people dressed as death himself or herself uh, or as the dead. And, and, and in some ways, it's a celebration, you know, it's like Veterans Day mixed with Mardi Gras. <laughs> but not Veterans Day, Memorial Day mixed with Mardi Gras. But I don't know. I, it's just, I, yeah. So your mom didn't do... Uh trick-or-treating no she she was 12 when she moved to america and oh, so, so she was already on she the was high end of too the old but she had tons of little brothers and sisters and at first yeah she didn't they didn't know she said that people came to the door one halloween in costume and she answered the door and she, you know they said trick-or-treat and all that and she was just like well what? why what and uh she said that they they soaked the windows, <laughs> and I, I, I this was just like two days ago. I asked her about that, and she's like, "We got our windows soaked," and I didn't understand. And then when I went to school the next day or two days later, they told it was like, "Well, yeah, you have to give us candy, or we do a trick." And so I think that soured her on Halloween for a while. But like her little brothers and sisters were just like, "Oh, this is the greatest thing! There's candy, we can get candy, kind of thing." So yeah, that pretty much convinces any child. Candy? Okay, I'm there. What is it? Thing? Uh, you dress up? Okay, I like that too. Uh, that's interesting, though, the soaping of the window. See, I, I wish you'd mentioned to me that you were going to ask your parents. Because I saw my dad just yesterday, and I could have totally asked him what Halloween was like when he was a child. Because, yeah, my dad, he was born in the 30s. So it would definitely be a historical take on it. You know, what was it like? Cause, but you said that you saw a picture of your dad at Halloween. I saw a picture of my dad in a costume that I assumed was a Halloween costume, but it could have just been him dressing up playing cowboys and Indians for all I know. Because people did that. In those yeah. Times. Yeah. The, the, I mean, 
like we've talked about many times, a Western, that was the number one kind of movie in those days. You know, it was cheap. It was easy. It was uh, everywhere popular. You know, people loved them. And so it was all about cowboys and Indians. But uh, those darn Sputnik went up and those space toys became number <laughs> one. And Space toy. Upstart space toys. So I don't know if he was Halloween. I've also seen this picture. And I want to say it's probably my dad's sister. So my aunt, my two aunts, and they're wearing these costumes and they're creepy looking costumes. They're maybe like Mardi Gras kind of costumes, you know, where you have like the mask that has the big bird beak kind of a nose and stuff. And they've got like the tall pointed hats on and just this weird costume. And I look at that and I'm just like, why does the bird the beak upset you, Biggie? Is that a Halloween costume? Or is that a Mardi Gras costume? Or is that just a creepy devil worshiper costume? <laughs> That was a Friday night for your aunties. It was just for the seance they wore this. I don't know, but it's kind of a creepy picture. And also, you know, it's all old school and there's these kids standing there wearing these costumes. And it looks, it makes me think of that Halloween in July story that we did that one time by Kevin Anderson, where uh, the old timey children showed up knocking on his door saying trick or treat. Oh, and it, but it was not Halloween. And it was, and it was July and he's just like, what's going on? And they were like, dressed as like a creepy old hobo clown and stuff was their costume and it was just like the scary threadbare kind of looking costume that you would have from way back when I don't know interesting but yeah I I, I wish I could have asked him if I didn't only known I would have because it would be interesting to have another perspective especially since you didn't really get an answer out of your dad and your mom was like Dia de los muertos bueno <laughs> Yeah, her her little brothers loved Halloween, I, I guess. But by then they had been Americanized, right? You know, they didn't even have an accent by then. They were no, like, no. I mean, none of them have an accent anymore. They spent fifty, sixty years in America, so that's. But yeah, my my grandmother spoke the worst English until the day she died. <laughs> she, I, well, you know how it is. Kids pick up. Yeah, on that tends to be the way it is. So easily, the and, older people learn it poorly, if at all. The kids learn it without even trying, and they sound like natives immediately. And you're just like, oh, "You stupid kid! I'm working so hard at this. Why do you? Why can you do it perfectly?" I feel bad because I, this has sort of been another episode. Yeah, are we done with talking about the history of Halloween? You think? Well, is there was anything there, you want to talk? Was about? there more cool stuff that you learned about in the? Uh... Well, sure. Yeah, there, it it was fun. To just read, and they had photographs. I remember you pointed out that there was an advertisement from <laughs> Rocks. Rocks, and it was a candy, and but it was just you know there are several different kinds of Brock's candies, and you can give them out on Halloween. And yeah, there was yeah. a kid in a pirate costume or something that said, "You mean I can have one of each?" Yep. Golly! And, and she had the little dish that had like th- I'm not a communist, little, and none of them were. Uh, wrapped or anything they were just out like candy corns you just take a candy handful of them or something like that are candy corns frowned upon now because they're not wrapped i'm sure unwrapped ones would be frowned upon you get like a little packet with them in it probably or something like that oh really you you don't just yeah you can't just put unwrapped candy into some kid's bag because they're gonna dump it out and then their parents are gonna say okay throw those ones away okay i hadn't those were tampered with just yeah i Corn, candy corns were always loose for me. But. Yeah, it's like the, that was the stuff you could get away with. And the caramel apples and that kind of crap. You can't do that. I haven't now. had a caramel apple in so long. But yeah, that was there would always be like some old lady or whatever that would give out caramel apples. And yeah, and all the candy would be stuck to it and stuff because it's <laughs> in your bag. But... And they'd give out popcorn balls. I, oh, I told this story about my daughter where we went trick-or-treating and we went to the one house and they had a huge jug of hot chocolate and they were giving kids a cup of hot chocolate and I was like holy crap you can just give somebody hot chocolate and then to prove my point she went daddy look I got hot chocolate and tripped and fell down the stairs Uh and dumped the hot chocolate all over her white bunny costume and uh, that's why I think people stopped giving hot chocolate is because it makes people fall down (laughs) stairs but yeah I mean just all that kind of stuff it's basically gone away you don't do that unless 
it's somebody you know, I guess. I don't know. Like if some kids show up to your house and you're like, oh, it's Jimmy. You're my favorite kid. Here, this is yours. And you give them the special thing that you made and then their parents are probably going to let them have it because they know you and trust you or something. But uh, there was this uh, thing that, that were, there's an there's a rival tradition to trick or treating that started in Utah and it spread like a cancer <laughs> all across America called trunk or treat. And basically what it is. Yeah. Prepare yourself. This is friggin horrific, man. Instead of going house to house, you know, and actually getting physical exercise <laughs> and getting to know the neighbors and pleasing people. Pleasing people? Is that what you did when you went trick-or-treating? Well, I mean, were, that happened once ago. There were a lot of lonely the, widows the in the teenage years, but... <laughs> they, uh, they, they will all go to a parking lot, like a church parking lot or school parking lot, and the people who choose to participate will all be parked in like a circle or a square or some shape. And they open their trunk. Pentag- and, Pentagon. It may well be. Octagon sometimes. Nonagon. They open their trunks and in the trunk is a, a, a tied naked woman. Oh. oh, no, no. I'm sorry. That, that was, was a Freudian that slip. That was your trunk that you were thinking of. In the trunk is a, you know, a bowl full of candy or, or, or eyes or, you know, <laughs> little cloves of garlic or, you know, Zuni fetish dolls. What, whatever a child most likes. Black cows. And, uh, <laughs> sorry, it's a candy You're having cup. a hard time telling this story, aren't you? You can't. <laughs> there's a candy called Black Cow. Well, by the time you're done, there's an ice cream bar called Skinny Cow. So there. Oh, that is just wrong. You know what Black Cow used to be called, right? Big Black Son of a Bitch. I, I don't know why. Uh, yeah. They, okay. Uh, in these trunks, there's the candy. And kids just go from car to car collecting candy. 35 seconds later, they're done, and they drive away, <laughs> and that's it. It's happy Halloween, kids. <laughs> when I heard of this, I was just like, oh, that's the saddest thing I've ever heard. This was, And it said right there on Wikipedia, and you know that it's... it's uh, Wikipedia is always the truth. Yeah, it's verifiable there, that this was created by people who hate Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. There was There's so much delight... In the, you know, it's the, it, some old lady who's had a visitor once that year, you know what I mean? And, and they wanted to, they wanted and to. And they, they murdered were, that one with, <laughs> with arsenic and buried him in the basement and they need some new ones. That's damn right. That's, that's how we should <laughs> thin out the herd a little. No, I was saying, you know, somebody with the, the, the watchtower or whatever is the only person that had come by the house that whole year. <laughs> but they'd be like, oh. Oh, how delightful. You know, it's like, oh, the red skull. Yes, you know, it's like, oh, Hannibal oh, Lecter. Thank yeah. you. Oh, you two are the human centipede. That's what let me get my camera. I love that. The, the, the delight of the old one. Because, okay, my farming community was, you know, how I was talking about Detroit being, a, a, it's almost a ghost town. People, whatever is in between a a town on hard times and a ghost town. That is what Detroit is. But our town was whatever the thing is before ghost town, where the only people that lived in the town were farmers and people who were about to die. So it would be fun to go from house to house and, and these old elderly ladies would come out and, and suddenly they had visitors for the first time. And and yes, they oh, a spooky ghost costume. And it's like, oh, you're Destro. That's wonderful, you know. <laughs> oh, look, Major Blood. <laughs> yes. My grandson was Dr. Mindbender. And believe me, the monocle was the hardest part of it. Like, okay, thanks, Grandma. Can I please oh, get a... Oh, look, Tamox and Zomat. <laughs> yes, now I'm going to give him a candy and you say, mmm. <laughs> Folks, if you're not amused by this episode, don't listen tomorrow because I'm trying as hard as I freaking can. After the last episode we recorded, which was just nails on the chalkboard, I'm trying hard to be entertaining in this. <laughs> anyway. Uh, and it's good that you pulled out your old lady voice that you've used a thousand times and in, within only 150 episodes, Stop, too, which is impressive. this was the kindly old lady voice. This is not the ominous old lady there voice. There are some who call me witch. No. That was a totally different voice. It's like Casey Kasem and my impression of Lucifer. They were, they're similar. <laughs> 
But the Lucifer one is spot on, at least. All right. Well, <laughs> anyhow, apparently I have uh, I've said too much. Okay, so the you've got are on their way. Yes, yeah, so you've got one child left. Are you going to take him out trick or treating this year? Yeah, we'll take him out. Hopefully, he'll enjoy it. It's hard to say because he's still pretty young. I mean, he's under two years old. So, but he's smart enough to disrupt the podcast every time I come over. Yes, yes, he he can feel the evil aura coming up through the floor, and it causes him to cry. Those boys are talking about devil worship. Oh, the old lady, the my old lady of voice and the voice of your one year old son are just exactly the same voice. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. I mean, we'll take him. I don't know if he's to the point where he'll get it. I'm sure he'll stand up there. And, you know, it's interesting because we went when we were in Canada, they had, I want to say it was Heritage Day. They have a lot of those holidays in Canada because they have to have one every month. That's uh, just a, it's a requirement somehow. So they have a lot of made up days like Heritage Day, for example, and Victoria Day and Easter. Yeah, Easter, just- right. Yeah, all those ones that, what the heck? You know, you never heard of them before. But anyways, Victoria Day. <laughs> they, they, my my wife mentions May Long Weekend. Now you've mentioned May Long Weekend too, and and I thought that was a Chinese word, <laughs> May Long. And See, that's like, what I thought it was crap. for a while. I just they don't even bother to come up with a name for it anymore. They just they call okay. This is the ours. This is May Long Weekend. Okay, that's the holiday. Go. Do something. We stopped Celebr- trying on Bastille Day, okay? Celebrate May Long, okay? She was this nice Chinese person. She was that the immigrated. first woman on record to say, Me love you long time. I think we <laughs> oh, need to honor that. <laughs> but, anyways, yeah, so they had this Heritage Day, and in the town where her parents live, they had a parade for Heritage Day. I guess they do every year Heritage Week. Or whatever, and we we like went to three different pancake breakfasts while we were there, which made it easier on my uh, mother in law, where she's just like, yeah, that way I don't have to do breakfast. She's, you go pancake breakfast, come back when you're done. And I get big friggin' terrible children out of my house for three days, and you're like, wait, what? Why did you <laughs> say that so I could hear? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we went to the parade, and it's one of those small town parades, so they were throwing out candy. To all the kids, you know, they just had giant bags of saltwater taffy and the Tootsie Rolls and all that stuff. And they're just hucking it out like crazy as they go by. At first, my son was just like, wow, look, there's horsies. Horsies, yay, horsey, horsey, nay. You know, he's saying this This is your 11-year-old. Yeah. But then after being a part of this parade for a while, he starts to realize, hey, this is candy they're throwing out. I don't know if he like unwrapped his first piece and ate it or something. Went, whoa, they're throwing candy? Or what it is. We can eat this. <laughs> but all of a sudden... Hey guys, look! As the parade wears on, he starts learning, this is more than just looking at horses walk by. This is awesome. There's candy coming at me. And then he starts to realize that like the other kids around him, when people that throw candy come by, they go, yay, and they cheer real loud. And then the candy comes, and all of a sudden, he starts cheering whenever he sees people with candy, which, unfortunately, he's one years old and very small, and he was sitting with us and not with the other kids, so they didn't hear him. But, um, yeah, he, he figured that out, the whole how do you get candy out of a parade thing within the space of the time of the parade. So we'll see. I think maybe he'll figure out this trick-or-treating thing pretty quick and and enjoy it as well i mean it's yet to be seen time is coming close though i haven't got a costume for him yet this year though we need to get one last year he was a dinosaur and it was cute it's hard not to be cute when you're uh, less than a year old though oh you should see my baby pictures oh it is possible not to be cute (laughs) i didn't say it was impossible i just said it was hard (laughs) All right. Well, I'm I'm going to call this uh, called this one our best episode ever. But uh, you may call it over if you'd like. <laughs> All right, I will call it over. Thanks for listening, everybody. This is Big Anglovich, and this is Richard. This is <laughs> Somebody. this is Richard Dreyfus. I I don't need this. I was in Jaws. <laughs> uh, this is Rich Outfield. Trick or treat. Smell my feet. Hey, <laughs> is it your feet that I can smell? 
That Gets My Go is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. That'll teach you.